Rwanda is ranked as one of those countries that have fought so much, like anti-corruption, like somewhere ahead on top. I have heard most people say when they traveled to Rwanda, some were disappointed, some kept indoors because they were afraid of many things. They didn't know where to start from. They were told Rwanda has a lot of rules, so they were afraid of breaking any. Others said they were disappointed, they didn't have freedom. There is a lot of things and they say i didn't know what to do i didn't know this was this i was arrested i was penalized as in there are very many things disappointments success stories and excellent stories you've had people say about rwanda so my name is erina tl welcome back to my youtube channel today i would like to tell you some of the things you should know before coming to rwanda so that you are not worried you have peace, you are settled, you're not indoors all the time so that you can enjoy and have a perfect stay in Rwanda. I wouldn't want you to be taken by surprise, even me too. There are some things that took me by surprise, but I wouldn't want the same things to happen to you. So I want to brief you a bit so that by the time you come, you're more informed and nothing just storms you by surprise. So let's go into this. Number one. There is language barrier if you're coming from an English speaking country. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Me, being from Uganda, number one English speaking country in Africa. And all I know is English and my local languages. I don't know French, I don't know Swahili. My God. Even talking to a border guy, explaining, thank God I got a host who knows English. But you should know that. If you don't know French or Swahili or Rwandese language, find a host who knows English or find someone who knows English in Rwanda who will keep guiding you all the way through. Here, they only know Rwandese, French and a little Swahili. And not all know French. Most of them know typically Rwandese. So that is something you will have to note. When you come here thank god i had my host who knows english we had a friend desire new english every time we were stuck we just called him maybe then he has to call back and then explain to the border person if you're going to get a border border that is what you west africans call okada so if you're going to get a border border or a motorbike first call someone who knows english and they know randy's then they will call a border guy and then explain to them please take her to this place and this place so if we didn't have those people would really be stuck not that before you come to rwanda so, number two be you informed that there are no tribes in rwanda they are all rwandis one people no differences nothing one people one nation they are all rwandis don't bring about the issues from your land which tribes which ethnicity what do not talk about that in rwanda if you want to know why that is not encouraged, they are all Rwandese, one tribe like this, Rwandese. Go visit the Kigali Genocide Memorial, then you will understand. If you doubt what I'm telling you about that, try bringing that topic with a typical person from here. You will know, no one will answer you. But just keep quiet, because that's not them. It doesn't define them, it just hurts people. So they don't believe in that just for you to be warned and be informed just don't talk about it just for coming to rwanda rwanda is a very kigali rwanda because that's where i've been so far but rwanda as a general is a very clean country and very green too should you be caught contributing to that dirt in the city you will pay you'll suffer so as you come most of you come from countries that are so free you eat your maize you throw things anyhow you eat whatever you throw things anyhow should you be caught behaving like that in rwanda you will suffer so mark this vividly when you come to rwanda it's a clean place it's a clean country do all it takes to keep it clean do not contribute to making it dirty forewarned for us don't say I didn't tell you. Number of course I told you. I can't forget to tell you 
that Rwanda is a very secure country. Rwanda, Kigali, like Rwanda at large, not only Kigali, Rwanda at large <clears throat> is a very secure country. I've been moving out at night. I even did a nightlife in Rwanda. I've been vlogging on the streets of Rwanda and no one has snatched my phone. I've not had any attacks. We are sleeping. For some days I've been going back at night and no worry at all. So, Rwanda is a very secure country. Please come and visit. It is peaceful. Security is at a higher level. The police is always patro patrolling around. So, I must tell you, Rwanda is a very secure country. If I can say this in, in better English or in capital board letters, I would say that. So, where I am standing is a monument of the peacekeepers, some of the peacekeepers, some of the people who fought so hard to ensure that there is this security I'm telling you about Rwanda. This is the Rwandan Patriotic Army that fought out the genocide. Rwanda is a peaceful country and number five. It's rules and rules and rules in Rwanda and you will follow them. You will definitely follow them. There are very many rules. You're not supposed to make a noise. You're not supposed to step in the green grass. But that is everywhere. Even in your country, you're not supposed to step in the green grass. Okay? And here, they are strict on that. They keep those rules. They obey. All of these abide by the rules. So if you are national and you're coming, ask around for the rules in Rwanda and you should abide by them. For example, on all border borders, those are motorbikes, which West Africans call Okada. You're not supposed to sit on it if you're not wearing a helmet. Most of us Ugandans are not used to that. You can, if you want. Even on safe border, you can refuse the helmet. But here in Rwanda, it is a must. You're not supposed to sit on the board and you're not putting on a helmet. It is for your safety and it is a rule. Should you be gotten, you will suffer the consequences. You will pay. So there are many other rules. No noise. Do you know that your neighbor, if you put on your hoof as so loud, my friend has told me in Rwanda, your neighbor will report you to the police if they want, if they're inconvenienced. So it's rules and rules and rules and you have to obey. I'm sure you've heard a lot of people complain that Rwanda is expensive. Let me tell you what you should know before coming. Okay, for every trip, you save for it. But even the people who have complained about it being a very expensive compared to Uganda and Tanzania, it depends on the life you've chosen to live. If you choose to live in hotels, a uh, luxurious life, there is no cheap luxurious life. That's why it's luxurious. Even in, if you're to stay in Uganda, in hotels, it is still expensive. So if it depends on which life you're going to use to live. So me, I'm giving you a view of the cost of living in Rwanda through my lens. Through my lens, it's been very cheap. I've not, been, I've not used safaris. I've not used uh, hotels. I've been using Airbnb. And I, I showed you my Airbnb, which costed me only $10. Only $10 per night. Was that expensive? No. So it is expensive depending on which life you're going to live. If you're going to live a posh life, Rwanda is expensive. If you're going to live a simple life, like a simple village girl, I've been in Rwanda, it's very cheap. The only expense will come from when you don't know the places, and there is this happens in every country. If you're new to that country and you don't know the places, they tend to hike the prices for you. For example, the motorcycle, they get to know you're not from Rwanda. They will add 500 francs on top of that normal charge. So, but generally everything is the same, depending, again, depending on what kind of life you're going to live. Yes. Check out also my video about the cost of living. So another thing is non-biodegradable things are not allowed. For some of us who cross to Rwanda using border, they will check you and remove all your caveras, whatever. As long as it's non-biodegradable, 
and it's not an acceptable plastic, they will not allow. The example I can give you are the Caveras. Ugandans who use that a lot. So mind you, as you're coming to Rwanda, if you've packed anything that has Kavira, please remove it. They use paper bags and paper in Rwanda. That is what they use. Don't say I didn't warn you. Forewarned, forearmed. But Kigali is very modernized. It's a modernized city. Yes, the architecture is on point. You can see the building behind me. That is the Kigali Convention Center. And it's where I'm sitting right now, enjoying a cold breeze. So it is very modernized. Buildings are modernized as, as they have infrastructure. They do have it, yeah. So if you've been lied to that in Africa or in Rwanda, to be specific, they sleep in hearts, they sleep in funny houses, grass-thatched houses, Actually, in Rwanda, I have not seen a grass-thatched house. Apart from the grass-thatched entrance I saw at the <clears throat> Kegali Cultural Center. But um, it is a modernized place. Uh, buildings you can see all around, they are modern architecture. The roads, modern as in everything is modernized, the transportation system. I have a whole video about the transportation system in Rwanda. It's very modernized, whereby to board a bus, you'll need a card, and it's called a tap and go, where you just load your money and then load, get the bus. Yeah. So it's very modern. You'll not find that in a place that is not modern. You'll find these local things, enter, pay cash, go. Okay, there's a small little cash provision, I think. When they really get to understand you are you are an international, you've not yet gotten a card. It's very modern. In their markets, well, I'm telling you Rwanda is modern, in their markets, marketplaces, they are indoors, not these funny things selling on street. Maybe you find that literally selling on streets outside the city, like in those small outside. But in the city, the markets are very well built like malls. Like they are like shopping malls, even markets for agricultural produce, fruits and what. They are well, uh, different countries come out to say corruption is not allowed in a country. But the, the famous, most famous form of corruption is bribery. Other forms I don't know. <clears throat> now in Kigali, Rwanda, and Rwanda at large, let me warn you about, uh, about bribery. If you are caught in an act, please pay the penalty or plead for mercy that you be forgiven. But don't try your funny things. Kito kidogo. I buy you chai. Oh my God. That is going to be like an insult to the person. It's going to be like a disrespect. You are going to suffer more because they're going to say you're bringing corruption to their country. Rwanda is ranked as one of those countries that have fought so much, like anti-corruption, like somewhere ahead on top, somewhere there. So should you come with your habits of something, something, kituki dog, <laughs> you will not handle in Rwanda. So <clears throat> like I've shown you, that statute was rewarded as an, as because Rwanda portrayed an excellent picture in fighting corruption in the anti-corruption movement that is the statute and it reads as follows Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani International Anti-Corruption Excellence Award this statute was constructed in appreciation of the people of Rwanda and the anti-corruption efforts of His Excellency President Paul Kagame the hand you are seeing the palm being stretched out it shows that no bribery is accepted in kigali rwanda if you're caught doing wrong plead for mercy and if you're forgiven that is good if there is a penalty to pay pay it if you 
but don't try your things of little little things. Before coming to Kigali, most of the places, the touring places in town, they are not to be paid for. You don't pay. And where you're asked to pay, and they're beautiful places by the way, so where you're asked to pay, it's because, yeah, it's worth it. I'm not saying the places you're not paying, they are not worth, but most of the places you don't pay in Kigali, only where I've paid here, it is at the, I think you'll be seeing my video, it is at the Museum Against the Genocide, but it is worth it. So even when you're told to pay, it is worth it because it's for maintenance and all that. So even I think you should know that about Kigali. Yes. At the museum, I just paid 3,000 francs, but it's worth it. So now I just have a chance to go inside the convention center. Like you saw in my video, when I came to see if I can tour around, instead I went to the uh, Oman exhibition, Oman product exhibition. So now I'm told I can go inside and tour around the place for free. Uh, another thing you should know in Kigali, Rwanda, when it starts raining, it never stops. Oh my God. It's like it's raining forever. See, I'm all wet. I'm all wet. I've just come back. <sighs> oh my God. If I was to stay there, it's been raining for like four hours now. Four hours. Mm -hmm. So what you should know is that I think January, Feb, March till April, maybe it's rainy in Rwanda. So actually that's why Nappy, when Nappy was here in Feb, he kept on complaining it was raining the whole day. Yes, in Rwanda when it means to rain the whole day, it does it without opposition. Oh my God, I'm so wet. A good thing my Buddha Buddha person was very patient with me. He would reach somewhere and tell me, let's stop. Okay now, let's continue. But I'm all wet. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's been your girl, Irina TL. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you got sensitized about what you, the, what you should know before coming to Rwanda. It's been your girl, Irina TL. But please don't forget to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell another friend that Irina TL is the girl on vibe. If you want to travel Africa to tour, I'm from Uganda. If you want to tour Uganda and all of Africa, just watch my vlogs and follow me wherever I go. Come.